Era. Era is a word that many Sonic fans are used to hearing, because Sonic fans tend to divide Sonic the Hedgehog, the whole franchise, in different kind of eras. And while there are many eras, I think one thing is certain, we are entering in a new era of Sonic the Hedgehog. Hey, welcome to Sonic Station, and today we are going to discuss what is this new Sonic era that we are getting into. But before we do it, you already know, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and share with your friends and all those things that other YouTubers ask. Before we start, I would like to define the eras that make Sonic the Hedgehog, because there are many people that make different kinds of divisions. There are mentions to a Dark Era, to a Dark Age, to a Meta Era, but I think we can simplify things. Sonic is made objectively by three eras. The first one is the Classic Era, an era that started in 1991 with the release of Sonic the Hedgehog on the Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis, and it ended in 1998 with the release of Sonic Adventure in Japan for the Sega Dreamcast. This era is defined by many things. One of them is an art style, where Sonic has its, well, classic design. And another thing that really defines this era is, of course, the types of games that make this era. Sonic at the time was mostly focused on 2D side-scroller platformer games that had a lot of focus in terms of physics and games that did not have inside of them many mentions to story or to lore of Sonic the Hedgehog. In fact, it was a bit of a confusing time for that. There are many games that fit in this description, of course, those being Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 on the Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis, Sonic the Hedgehog CD, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Knuckles Chaotix, and even uh, the Sega Mega Drive or Game Gear games, such as Sonic 1 and 2, the alternate versions for the Master System and Game Gear, Sonic Chaos, Sonic Triple Trouble, and Sonic Blast. Of course, there are other games with other gameplay styles and even tons of spin-offs, but we are just considering what truly defines the classic era of Sonic the Hedgehog. After that, we actually had a second era, the Adventure Era, that is mostly known by this name through fans, which started with Sonic Adventure, of course, and it ended in 2006 with the release of Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 for the PS3 and Xbox 360. And this era was mostly defined by some pretty neat characteristics, which are a bigger focus in story. In fact, many games have these kinds of epic, grandiose stories. A bigger focus is given to characters and to the character development. The appearance has been changed to what we know nowadays as modern iterations or modern characters, just like modern Sonic. And the most of the games were, this time, going to the third dimension. It was the introduction and the jump to the 3D, where we had many different kinds of gameplay styles and a huge variety of characters to play as. And there are many games that represent this era, those being mostly Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Heroes, and even Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. They feature many gameplay styles that still vary from the main core style, which is Sonic gameplay style in Sonic Adventure. Well, this era ended with Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, and after that we have a new era, which is mostly known as the Boost Era, where we still have the modern design for Sonic characters, and that is defined basically by the introduction of the new gameplay mechanic, the Boost mechanic, where most games were Boost games that feature high speed, really quick action uh, stages, where you have a lot of adrenaline playing them, and where Sonic needs to keep on boosting. That era is defined by that, by a bit of less development in terms of Sonic stories and a bigger focus on something that is mostly humor that child, uh, that child or children at the time would find funny. 
and a bigger focus on only one playable character, Sonic the Hedgehog, with a feature of other gameplay styles through basically power-ups, which can be the Wisps or even the Werehawk transformation. And this era started mostly with the game Sonic Unleashed, the game that was released after Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, and ended with the release of Sonic Forces for the PS4, PC, Xbox One, you know, the current gen consoles at the time. Either way, this is basically what defines the three eras of Sonic the Hedgehog that we have. And now we are entering in the fourth era, an era that I am going to explore with you guys in this video. But before we continue with that, I would like to take some time to analyze something that I find quite funny. Every single Sonic era ends with a bad game, don't believe me? Take a look at the classic era, it ended with the, well, non-release, because it was not released, Sonic Extreme, a game that had a really poor development by Sega. Then we had Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, marking the end of the adventure era, a game that, well, did not have the best development and had a ton of bugs, as many of us know. And then we have the end of the Boost era with Sonic Forces, a game that, while it wasn't bad in terms of bugs, in terms of glitches, and it played, well, good enough, at least it worked, it was a game that disappointed a lot the Sonic community. And why that happened is because they overhyped the game and they underdelivered to everything that was basically the main idea of a Sonic game coming from Sonic fans. Now, we are in a fourth era. I think that is undeniable. And many people tried to give the names to this era. I think no one got it right. And Sega might have revealed today, at the day that I am recording and releasing this video, the name of the new era that Sonic the Hedgehog is facing. So, if we look at Sonic the Hedgehog, well, um, this new era is basically marked by a new game, which is Sonic Frontiers, an open world game where Sonic goes through many adventures in an open world, we have whole different kinds of mechanics, and many people thought that this would be the open world era. But I highly disagree, and I'm going to explain why. I don't think that um, an era is made just by one game, and there have been many Sonic games that have been released after what was Sonic Forces. And um, I think it's a bit unfair just look at Sonic Frontiers as this brand new game. Because it is not as new as the other Sonic games, you know? So let's take a look at Sonic Frontiers. It has the open world aspect, that's true. But it still has many other aspects of the other eras, of the other things that define other eras. For instance, fans of the Boost era still have boosts in Sonic Frontiers and still have the cyberspace stages to keep on having the high-speed challenges that they used to like in the Boost era games. Maybe if we look at the Adventure era we'll find something. In fact, we do. We have the presence of Tails, Knuckles and Amy as part of the story and we even have a higher, more grandiose story in this game and even some focus to physics, which is something that I need not mention but that the Adventure era also had a high focus on. So, Sonic Frontiers was made to please the Adventure and the Boost fans, at the same time keeping evolving Sonic the Hedgehog, because that is what defines Sonic the Hedgehog. It is a video game franchise that keeps on evolving, and that might be a good thing or a bad thing as we are going to see in this video. But what other games were released? Well, we had Sonic Origins and Sonic Origins Plus, which is a collection of the four main classic Sonic games that, well, celebrated classic Sonic as a whole, being able to play as Sonic, Tails and Knuckles in these four classic titles and having the newcomer Amy Rose being added, which is something that the Plus DLC did. And we can see here four playable characters and a bigger variety. One thing that I did not notice is that Tails, Knuckles and Amy are also coming to Sonic Frontiers, and I think that is the higher focus point of Frontiers. 
Frontiers has been updating and has been providing many different things. We now have the Spin Dash, we had an anniversary event, and we are going to have a gameplay of three different characters. Tails, Knuckles and Amy are going to be added. Now, if you look at other games, we also have Sonic Superstars, the upcoming Sonic game that has still not been released at the time that I am mentioning this. So, it's a brand new 2D classic adventure with Sonic, Tails, Knuckles and Amy as playable characters, reintroducing Fang the Sniper and Dr. Eggman to the fray, and allowing a new car character in the name of Trip to join the party. So, these games were made to please classic Sonic fans, and at the same time allow you multiplayer gameplay, because Sonic Superstars has a higher focus on multiplayer, and even Sonic Origins Plus has some multiplayer modes. There has been also a release of a game that many people don't seem to value, but it's actually pretty important, which is Sonic Speed Simulator, a game that has mostly the physics of Sonic Adventure, at least in terms of feel, you know? But it is mostly an open world kinda game made on Roblox. For those that like Roblox, they can enjoy Sonic the Hedgehog. These games all have something in common. They are made to please different kinds of fans. Those that grew up with the classic games, they are going to have Sonic Superstars and Sonic Origins and Origins Plus to play. You like the adventure ones? Well, you can experience that in Sonic Speed Simulator, at least a little bit of the feel, and in Sonic Frontiers if you want to. In fact, you are going to have new gameplay styles with the introduction of Tails, Knuckles and Amy pretty soon. You prefer the Boost era. Well, you have Sonic Frontiers and the Boost was added also to Sonic Speed Simulator. And um, you like something new? You still have Sonic Frontiers. But Sega did not end here. There have been other games, even games released before, and if we look at it, we can see a trend with Sonic the Hedgehog. Games such as, of course, The Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, a spin-off Sonic game that allowed you to interact with your favorite characters and have fun with them, and it was even a free game. There are mobile games, Sonic Racing was released at the time, and at this time Sonic Forces Speed Battle and Sonic Dash still receive constant updates. If you are someone that is mostly focused on racing spin-offs, well, you have Team Sonic Racing, a game that was made with co-op in mind. But Sonic did not stop in terms of games. Sonic went even further beyond in these kinds of years. Don't believe me? If you want a more Hollywood, high-budget experience, well, you have Sonic the Hedgehog, Movie 1 and Movie 2, and even a Knuckles series is going to be released pretty soon. Hey, you prefer to be in your home watching a Sonic show? Well, you have Sonic Prime. Sonic Prime has been released, focused on our main heroes, and there are even other Sonic animations, just like Chow in Space, Team Sonic Racing Overdrive, Sonic Colors Rise of the Wisps, and much more. And even if you take a look at the Boost fans, they still have Sonic Colors Ultimate, which has been released. And at this time, there are still rumors for more Sonic remakes or more Sonic, uh, you know, Sonic ports of old games. Everyone is being represented. Don't believe me? Let's keep on looking. Sonic Comics? You have IDW Sonic, that is there providing no new stories and even bringing back both classic and modern takes of our favorite characters. Maybe you prefer something related to art? Well, Sonic Channel still posts every single month a different kind of wallpaper art of our favorite characters that makes mentions to many things that happened in previous games. And speaking of previous games, there's also a brand new thing called Game Anniversary Artwork, where every single month we celebrate the birthday or the anniversary of a Sonic game that was released. And there are some really obscure ones. You prefer music? Well, there are many Sonic, you know, Sonic-related things. Sonic remixes are still being released, and there is now the Sonic Symphony World Tour happening, an event where we celebrate Sonic music. Sonic has been everywhere. Even in merch, there has never been a huge amount of merch released as of today. Sonic is everywhere, and I think that is about Sonic. Sonic is now getting everywhere. But that's not the focus of it. 
focus of it is something a bit different that is inside Sonic the Hedgehog. We all know Sonic the Hedgehog from different things. Maybe we play the classic games, maybe we play the adventure games, maybe we play the boost games, or we met Sonic through the TV shows, the comics, whatever way we met Sonic, Sonic has been there and we all want different things from Sonic. And back in the day, I think that used to lead to a huge clash between people that are part of the Sonic community. But that no longer happens. In fact, I think that that era is about that. It's about feeling that you are part of Sonic the Hedgehog, that you are represented. If we even take a look at some of the things that have been recently revealed, we know that Sonic and Friends is a TikTok series with a shibified heart style of Sonic the Hedgehog that is going to be released. Maybe it's going to be more appealing to little children. Yeah, maybe it is. And it's going to be their introduction to Sonic the Hedgehog. But with that reveal, there came another thing. Another thing that I think it's pretty important and that not many people have been mentioning. At the time that I am recording this video, which I hope it's the same day that the video comes out, we have had something a little bit different. Sega released a different video. A video that is titled Fast Friends Forever. It shows many people hanging out, them sharing their experiences, doing different things. Of course, most of them are related to Sonic, but there are others that are not related to Sonic. And in that video, we can see that the people's experiences are what make them unique. Uh, and their sharing of perspectives are what make things move forward. And I think that that is the symbolism of this new era of Sonic. This is an era of union. This is an era of embracing, an era of inclusion. I'm going to call this new era of Sonic the Union Era, an era where no matter where you came from, this community, no matter what is your favorite thing, no matter what is the thing that you like the most in Sonic the Hedgehog, you have a place in this community. You have seen many things that attracted many different people to the Sonic community. Music, art, TV shows, movies, merchandise, we have the games, we have even different varieties of games with spin-offs even being relevant. Everyone has a different experience with Sonic the Hedgehog. And I think that everyone is finally being represented. Everyone is being valued. And we can take this community, we can unite our perspectives, and we can make something beautiful. Sonic the Hedgehog has appeared in our lives. And it is thanks to it that we even had many fans now working officially with Sonic the Hedgehog. Game developers, modders, ROM hackers, fan games enthusiasts. There are even games being made on Roblox. Music covers, original music that is still being made. Um, different stories with series even just like Sonic and Tails are. Animations just like Sonic Nazo Unleashed. It keeps on growing. The Sonic community is that. We are Sonic the Hedgehog. We are all who define Sonic. Even Sonic tubers had the opportunity of grabbing Sonic and making something of Sonic. There are many different kinds of, of Sonic content creators nowadays, and Sonic keeps on growing, keeps on delivering in many different fronts. It would be like a multimedia era, but I disagree with that because Sonic is not expanding to other areas because it wants to be popular in those areas. Sonic is hearing what is happening with their friends, what they want to happen, and it's allowing them to be represented. Whether you are a classic fan, an adventure fan, a modern fan, a Sonic Frontiers fan, a spin-off Sonic fan, Whatever defines you, you are part of Sonic the Hedgehog. And we, as members of the community, are what makes the Sonic the Hedgehog the brand. We are Sonic. Everyone that is part of Sonic the Hedgehog is 
Sonic the Hedgehog. And I think that is the message that Sega wants to transmit. This new era of Sonic the Hedgehog is an era of union. It's not an era where we all see how we have been created and we fight between what is better and what is worse. It is an era where we all can enjoy our things, we all can share our experiences, and we all can help Sonic the Hedgehog evolve. Because that, at the end of the day, is Sonic the Hedgehog. We are Sonic the Hedgehog. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.